Hello and welcome to Thinking Outside the Box with me, Tim Box. And me, Brit Box. We talk about all things to do with your mental health, emotional well-being and how to navigate your own mind in these strange times. But we're not doctors, so don't confuse our advice for medical advice. And even though we come at these subjects with a slightly more light-hearted approach, please don't think we trivialise any of the things we talk about because we certainly don't. However, because we come from a different perspective, we call the podcast Thinking Outside the Box. Okay, Brit, it's episode... 17. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Our episodes are nearly old enough to drive. Almost come of age. <laughs> Actually, seven, yeah, you can drive at 17, can't you? Yeah, some people can. I mean, you're what, 30. We don't need to go into this. And still, uh, <laughs> but at some point, I'm sure you'll reach the age when you feel like, yeah, you know what, I'm going to drive. Yeah, but I'm a little bit scared of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you suggesting you have a phobia? Or a fear. And, well, isn't that a beautiful segue into what Very we're talking about is. today? <laughs> fears and phobias. Yes. We're finally doing the episode on fears and phobias that I've wanted to do for absolutely ages. <laughs> because I don't know why this is like one of my pet uh, interests or topics. Well, I mean, I suppose I, I talk to people about this a lot because, it's you know, I'm a hypnotherapist. It's what I do. I see people for their fears and phobias a lot. But I just find this subject absolutely fascinating. Just the things that people are scared of, the things that people want to stay away from. And and more importantly as well, where they came from. Because nine times out of ten, you can be scared of something and you think, oh, I have no idea where that comes from. But if you really thought about it or if you delved a little deeper, then uh, then maybe you'd find out. Absolutely. It's so often, it's so frequent that a, a client that's, that, that comes to see me They'll be saying, I don't know where this came from, but almost in the next breath, they'll tell me about this experience that's very clearly imprinted on them psychologically and caused them to have this extreme reaction to a certain thing or situation. Mm. I may Um, be jumping ahead, but do you often find that it's stuff that happens when people are younger? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there is an argument that says everything is from when we're younger. Those sort of first eight or nine years when we start out with a blank page, nothing's written, and then we experience certain things. We pick up certain fears, certain insecurities, certain aversions, I Mm. suppose. So there is, you know, there's certainly certain uh, therapeutic schools of thought that are always looking for that initial thing that happened in childhood. It's very, um, is it Freud? Is it I think, very... yeah, uh, yeah, you'd have to ask somebody who knows a little bit more about <laughs> traditional psychology. But... Because the only reason I ask is because obviously we put out on social media this week uh, to get in touch with your strange fears and phobias and where you think they came from. We had a brilliant response, didn't we? We, we were inundated with people. It was the biggest response we've had for any call out we've done, actually, wasn't it? Exactly. And uh, and I noticed, obviously, I'm, I'm going to be reading through a few of these, but a lot of them are when I was younger, when I was a kid, yeah. when I was a child, this happened. So, yeah, that was something I wanted to ask you as a professional. Well, we will talk about that because even though most of the time the initial uh, sensitizing incident is from childhood, it doesn't mean you can't pick up fears later on in life. And certainly I speak to a lot of people who tell me that any fear they have has just gradually got worse and yeah. worse and worse as life's gone on. So yeah, there's we, we also do that thing of kind of um, reinforcing it, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, first things first, fear or phobia. Is there a distinction between a fear or a phobia? Oh, okay. So just me not having a clue about anything like this, Mm -hmm. I would say a fear is something that you're not keen on. Um, (laughs) But phobia is like, ah! Beautifully put. (laughs) I think that is, if you look that up, if you Google it, you'll find that actual distinction. The phobia is like, ah, yeah, that's yeah, the sound. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I really feel like this episode, I really wanted to have like sound effects. If we had a bigger budget for Aww. the podcast, I'd have like screams and like but, spooky music. But we don't have a budget. But we don't. So you'll have to just... <laughs> you just like do with us. To be fair, do we really need it when you can do your own sound? Ah! <laughs> there you go. That, yeah, kind of in essence, I suppose, right? The, the official distinction here, and, mm. and I was interested to look this up because when I'm dealing with somebody like a client, I've got no interest in whether... I would categorise it as a fear or an official phobia. All I know is somebody's experiencing a fear response towards a certain thing and would rather not be experiencing that response. Something that they don't like. Yeah, exactly. So officially speaking, fear is the emotion that Mm. our mind uses to protect us from imminent danger. Yes. So we will feel uncomfortable when we feel under threat and that, that discomfort that we call fear will encourage us to move away from the danger the so that we, yeah. we feel comfortable again. Yeah. Yeah? Um, whereas a phobia is regarded as something that physically or psychologically 
impairs us in some way. Right, okay. So in other words, there is a, a distinct aversion response. So the, the distinction that um, uh, the guy on WebMD, if you want to look it up. <laughs> oh my okay. God, WebMD has told me I'm dying on more than one occasion. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to encourage people to rush along to WebMD, but this is what their distinction was, the guy that was writing the article on this. Uh, he was saying like the difference being that most of us might feel a bit uncomfortable if a spider started crawling on us. Yeah. But the phobia would be I can no longer go outside because there are spiders outside. Right. Okay. You know, yeah. So it impairs you in some way. That's what we're calling a phobia. Right. Yeah. So um, so you could argue it's the it's the extra level. It's the higher level of of response. Yeah. yeah? Um, I've got some stats for you. I like a stat. I like a stat as well. I always feel like it's my duty to call up the stats. Yeah. When we're doing these podcasts, but. Uh, approximately 11% of us will at some point in our life experience a phobia response. Ooh. So that means 11% That's of us... That's not as high. I thought it'd be much higher. I thought it'd be much higher than that. Why, why do you think that? Because I feel like everyone's scared of something. <laughs> well, you know what? I think you're absolutely right. I think there is. It's fair to say that, that we have things that we're not comfortable with, but maybe what the statisticians are regarding as a phobia... Statistician. That's a good word. It's hard to say with braces on. I was going to say, you've done very well there. That's, a, that's the biggest word you've said since you've had your braces on. Um, but I think, you know, maybe the, the reaction they're talking about is something that is genuinely, I, I'm restricted in what I can do because of this. Yes. So, for example, I'm not comfortable tremendously with heights. No, you're not. But there's not really anything I wouldn't do because of a fear of heights, if you know what I mean. You mean I'm, like Tower of Terror? Well, I mean, that's more a fear of plummeting faster than gravity. <laughs> Tower of Terror is one of the best rides. I don't understand how you're scared of it. I don't like falling. <laughs> I don't like dropping from a Well, there a you go. Height. That's a favourite response because it stops us going on Tower of Terror. It does. But then you could argue you have a phobia of 3D ah, dark no. rides. No, because I'm not scared of that. What I don't like is the physical reaction of when I come off it and I throw up in a bin. Right. See, what we're referring to I try and limit here, the throwing up in a bin. See, we're when we're at Disney and Britt wants to go on Tower of Terror... <laughs> Uh, I decide not to, and just <laughs> just down the way from it is Ratatouille, <laughs> which, I, which I happen to love as and, a ride. And I just like because I get motion sickness because it's all three D. Yeah, I like the glasses, and and you ride around in a little. Rat, rat, you got your own Ratmobile last and you, time, you didn't you? Get to be really tiny. <laughs> Uh, rats, another common uh, phobia. Yeah. Rats, yeah. Um, anyway, we digress. But yeah, the point is that. Um, yeah, so most of us at some point will experience a fear, but it's whether it restricts us. Yeah? Yes. Um, and by the way, what percentage, he says, oh, covering I didn't up look, his nose. I didn't see. Did not say, no, I didn't right, see. What percentage of that 11% of people will seek treatment for their phobia? A percentage of a percentage? Yeah, yeah. So if no, you, I don't understand. Oh, well, let's imagine like 11% <laughs> represents 100 people. Okay. How many of that 100 people will at some point in their life go to get treatment for it? Well, 11%. Of the 11. So, you know what I've done, listeners? I've made the mistake of introducing some mathematical element to the podcast. I'm really, do you know what? I'm brilliant with words. I love writing. I think I'm quite good at it. Numbers? Numbers, no. No, no, no. Not, not with the numbers. Um, I don't tell me. You're going to have to okay, tell right. me. Only 6% of all of, of those. Of that, 11%. Yes. <laughs> What's that of a hundred percent though? Let's take away the numbers, yeah. Let's oh, forget no. the numbers for a minute, yeah. <laughs> Only that small percentage of people who experience phobias will ever actually do something about it. Right. Six of them. Six to, <laughs> yeah, six of the hundred percent per a hundred. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is sure. I mean this has become a very, very <laughs> unnecessarily complicated math lesson. You confused me. Uh, <laughs> again. <laughs> Let's. I'll tell you what, let's pretend we never said anything about numbers, Fine, yeah. okay? Moving and let's on. just talk about the general idea yeah. of Thank you. how few people actually go and get something done. I mean, only six of them. Oh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. in the whole in world. The whole world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the thing, I, so people often say to me, you must see loads of people for like fear of heights and for spiders. Yeah. And I don't see many at all. No. For that very reason that there's such a small percentage of people that even regard it as possible to do something about this fear. Yes. We put a lot more energy into avoiding the thing that we're afraid of. It feels easier than confronting it. Exactly. So the example I used, there was um, a few years ago, the London Underground, mm. they printed up a new map of the underground mm -hmm. that actually showed you when you went underground. So okay. you knew when you were above ground, you knew when you were below ground. And what it was, it was for people who suffered any sort of claustrophobia or, yeah. or kind of anxiety in, in enclosed spaces. Um, and they could navigate their way around London by minimising how often they go underground. 
Okay. Okay. Now, this, this tube map, I regard it as a little kind of analogous, like a little microcosm of what we actually do. We don't put our energy into changing how we feel about something. Yeah. We just say, right, there's certain places I can go, certain places I can't go in terms of what we can interact with. Yeah. And we put all our energy into navigating our way around the world, avoiding this or that. Mm. Yeah. And, and it becomes so second nature that we stop even perceiving these other places that mm. incorporate this, this thing we're afraid of. Well, I think, you know, the majority of people don't think they can change at all. Yeah. And they don't believe that people are capable of change. Yeah, well, that's that's one of those things we kind of, mm. yeah, that's, that's almost like that even unspoken though, truth, isn't it? Even though I can sit here, I mean, I, I fully believe people can change and I know people can change and I sit here knowing mm. I am absolutely not the same person I was five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Yep. I'm just not the same person. So for people to regard the, oh, well, I can't ever change. It's like, oh, are you still that teenager? Like some people are, don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> you know, some people think it's the best years of their life and they never they never change and they're always the school bully. But anyway, um, <laughs> but, but things can fundamentally change. But like you say, people buy into the idea of not able to change it. So why bother trying? Yeah, well, we do have this thing. Um, so I talk a lot about the barriers, the subconscious objections to change, mm. the reasons why we currently still feel the same way as we did in the old days or whatever. Yeah. And one of the most common barriers or subconscious objections that I encounter in my work is this idea that, well, this is just who I am. Isn't yes. It? I'm that person with that fear of heights or yeah. fear of spiders, yeah. you know. And it, it isn't something then that we start to strategize feeling differently about because it's who we are. You, it, this reminds me of Zoe Clues, our friend Zoe Clues, oh, uh, yeah. who's absolutely not listening to this song as I want. But, um, <laughs> every every week you <laughs> mention somebody and then say, I know she's not listening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there are people that do, though. I mean, a few people listen. Anyway, <laughs> Zoe said one of the things that she hates, which stuck with me, which really made me laugh, is when uh, I think she was on a dating app or something and someone had put, what you see is what you get. And she goes, <laughs> she said, oh, just just one dimensional, are you? Just, <laughs> just one thing. Just, just absolutely flat, yeah. one dimensional. Uh, Apparently declaring you have no hidden depth whatsoever. Yeah, you're, you're, you're as shallow as a puddle. Um, and it just really made me laugh. So yeah. that's, that's what made me think of that. Well, this is, okay, this is the thing. It's our ability to change is, is something that, that is inherent. We've learnt something every day of our life, yeah? Mm. And that in some way rewires our brains. Yeah. There's something like, again, I'm going to say a number here, so please don't, don't focus too much on it. There's something like 40 quadrillion active synaptic connections in that's a healthy human 40 brain. 40 with 15 zeros. It is, in fact. Well, you've stunned me. You've stunned me. <laughs> you do listen to what I say. <laughs> Against all the odds. I just remember that from one of your very early uh, presentations that I was there and I was watching like a proud girlfriend. Oh. And here I am, a wife of many years who knows every word you're about to say before you say it. That's very true, actually. Uh, <laughs> it was back in the day when I was pretending to have some sort of knowledge of neuroscience. Uh -huh. so, yeah, but, um, but that's a number that just stuck out. I remember I, I've read this a number of times in different, in different scientific journals. Like he reads scientific journals. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I Googled stuff. Um, and they He's are, done research. Research, in inverted commas, yeah. Um, they, they're constantly rewiring and reconfiguring. Mm. Our mm. brain is this thing that never stops growing and adapting to, to what comes into it via our five senses. Yeah, nice. We're constantly inputting information, and as a result, our brain grows in a certain way. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I don't mean you know, we end up with like lumps on our head where, where our brains have grown a certain way. But they did a, a study, oh, this is a while ago, uh, I think. Yeah. And it was about, they, they scanned people's brains, then they taught them to juggle. Then they rescanned their brains. Amazing. Simply speaking, in a very basic sense, their brains had changed shape in a small way because a part <laughs> of their brain had grown to incorporate that task. I like that. Yeah, I, I, it's quite a good example. I like that. Um, so, <laughs> well, yeah, you learned to juggle. I did, but that's not, that's Does not relevant. Brain, has your brain changed? Yeah, I, I think it did. When I looked in the mirror, I thought, you know what? There's something different about me. I'm noticing a different I'm now a juggler. I'm now a juggler, yeah. I, I'm, I've had the brain of a juggler. Um... Cool. what would that look like? <laughs> anyway, coming back to the topic roughly anyway yeah. that we're speaking about. So what it means is that we do actually have the option of growing and evolving. And yeah. that's a good thing. That's a good thing, you know. So we can actually, I don't know, overcome things. Hmm. But the question I have for you, young Brit. It's not a maths question, is it? It's not, it absolutely is not. <laughs> I've learned that today, not to ask you a maths question. Um, any fears or phobias that you have? Well, that's a very good question. So... I wouldn't say I had any phobias, right? but I would say I'm scared of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Uh, having, having clearly defined what we mean by these things. So here's the thing. I have a nervous disposition. 
You um, did. <laughs> Sorry, you're just saying that reminds me I, I, like if this was a film or a, or a sitcom we would now have cut to about half a dozen examples of little noises happening in the house and you screaming or yelling or, or so uh, jumping back I have a nervous disposition which means that if I hear something or see something move or something jumps out at me I I <laughs> I, I scream a little bit, like it just... Remember that time I opened the cupboard door and you went, <laughs> and like jumped across the kitchen? No, it's because you opened it behind me and I didn't, <laughs> I couldn't see what was happening. So, I'm scared of like... Oh, no, I'm not scared. I don't like sudden noises. I don't right. like sudden movements. I don't like things happening just like, oh, like a thing. Like yeah, I'm yeah. not... I don't like it. Jump scares. Yes. Jump scares make me wee. Like I'm not... <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not okay with things like that. So yeah. this is why I don't I don't watch horror films. Not yeah. because I'm I'm scared of them or they're gonna but I don't like the feeling of jumping of things making me jump. So this is why I say so I'm not I'm not scared. Do you know what it's not fear? I just don't like things moving and jumping out of me because I don't like how I feel when I react to it. Yeah, I Does get that make you. Sense? Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm it's not the scared of the thing. Visceral response. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not scared of the thing. I don't like my yeah. subconscious reaction. So you wouldn't say you have a phobia of spiders at all? No. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of a couple of incidents just spring to my mind as we as we discuss this. Yeah, certainly yesterday I can think in my recent memory when I was in the hallway and you went to open the back door in the kitchen. Um, and I assumed we had an intruder in the house. Because... We did. We did. And he was carrying eight knives is what eight happened. Eight spider ambled in looking rough and ready from the streets. Yeah. And with eight, yeah. And I honestly, the, the noise you made, it was, I'd like to, you know, if I can give a, a sort of auditory representation of it, it was like, Ah! That sort of thing. I mean, I'm so apologies if that was loud in your ear. I was anyone, that, but it was. I mean, that didn't do it justice either. It was literally like that scream went on too long to be a jump. That was now. There's something that we have to deal with, and I'm screaming for help. And it was apparently just a spider came in the back door. So here's the thing. I'm not scared of spiders, right? Wow. No, listen. I am scared of sudden movements <laughs> and things approaching me post haste. Yeah. Holding weapons. Right. I am i didn't see the spider, obviously. <laughs> By the time I got into the room, he'd run off down the street, probably, <laughs> and, and jumped in a car and just escaped, yeah? He was huge. Um, he was like my hand. I'm pretty like, sure he wasn't carrying a weapon. He was like, he, he, he was carrying several weapons. Anyway, we're off, massively off topic. The point is, yeah. I wouldn't say I had any phobias, no, because mm. I, okay, I don't think, as we've discovered, phobias are things that, what was it, affect you on a level where... That in, impair you. They, impair they, you, yeah. yeah. And I don't think this impairs me in any way. To be fair. I don't like, it makes me jump, I jump and I scream, and then I move on with my life. So th that's a really good point, actually, because I have a couple of tarantulas yes. as pets. And I yes, had I know. I think it's just as weird as well. <laughs> and I had, it was the midlife thing. Um, <laughs> and I had them when we met. Mm -hmm. So you had to come to terms with the fact that there were spiders in the house. Yeah. yeah not just, they don't amble no. around. We don't let, they're not like cats. We don't let them wander around. They're in a little vivarium. Um, and I remember... The first time, because you hadn't seen them being fed. No. And you, you have to give spiders live food. You give them live crickets. Yeah. Which is um, it's the only exciting thing that a tarantula does. It, it, it jumps on things. <laughs> it, it hunts by ambush. It doesn't do webs and mm. cats. It just it jumps on them. And I remember like I'd, my good self. I <laughs> when you don't not. Um, and when I, I videoed it, like, you know, you get a yeah, new thing yeah. and I videoed the spider. And I showed you the video, and we yeah. were standing somewhere in the middle of the room when yeah. I showed you this video. Yeah. But when the spider jumped, this was a video of the spider. It wasn't yes, a spider I know, in the room. I was there. You jumped into the corner of the room. And I screamed. did. It was the sudden movement. <laughs> so this is genuinely what just one of the many reasons that I don't have children because mm. sudden noises, you know, like kids just <laughs> start screaming. Like sudden noises put me so on edge yeah. that I hate it. Right. Like I hate it. Yeah. So sudden noises, sudden movements, can't deal with it. No, thank you. But I, I wouldn't say I was pho phobic. Of yeah, anything. okay, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. I'll accept that as an answer then. Right, thank you. Um, it's funny when I talk about having spiders, mm. people say to me, "Oh, is that? Do you use that then when you have clients who are afraid of spiders? That's part of the treatment." <laughs> I'm like, no, no of you don't want to traumatize them. Well, you know who wouldn't come 
to somebody who had spiders in their house is somebody that's afraid of spiders. <laughs> so if I said, yeah, and by the end of the session, you'll be holding this spider, yeah. they wouldn't come. Well, because... I get people say to me, I know you don't like them. How do you deal with it that Tim's got spiders? And I'm like, well, they don't really do anything. Yeah, they're they just, don't, to be fair. They just, they just sit in a locked box and... Yeah. Well, that's about it. It'd be like saying, you know, oh, you're scared of vases. How do you deal with all the vases? Well, like, oh, they don't really do anything. They're just it's there. funny as well. They seem to know when you're watching them. They just don't do anything. Yeah. And then you, you'll go back an hour later and they've moved somewhere else in the vivarium. You're like, well, I haven't seen you move. How did you get over there <laughs> when you don't seem to move at all? The, the, so basically, the long and the short of it is they do, they do nothing and they don't bother me. What bothers me are the ones that chase me down the hallway. <laughs> They're the ones that I, I dislike. Okay. Well, Although I have said to you, if for whatever reason any of the Bavarians break or it gets loose and you've never seen them, that's me gone. You will never hear from me again. I will send you the divorce papers in the post. No, thank you. We are done. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember um, when my mum went, because you got a snake? Yes. Uh, Lady Noodle. Yes. And um, do you remember when we got the snake and mum said, oh, well, you know, um, <laughs> if it escapes... She said if she gets out and she gets into the walls and you sell the house legally, you've got to tell the estate agent there's a snake in the walls. I mean, of all... <laughs> you know when people just know random facts? Like, how also, do you I'm know I'm not buying that? that. I don't buy that that's a fact. I think she would just like people to be open and transparent about the... With amount. how many snakes are in the walls. Exactly, the likelihood of encountering a snake. Um, anyway, we yeah. have gone massively off topic. <laughs> But we're getting back on topic now because um, we want. I want to talk about uh, causes yes. of phobias because obviously this is this is where we started, really, isn't it? What, yes. And we we actually asked the people that we put the shout out to mm -hmm. what do they think caused, caused. their their um, their fear? Yes. So um, now I looked this up, right? Because should I have to look it up? I deal with this stuff all the time, yeah. But I did want to see what the general. Um, I don't know the, the the common thinking on this is. Yes. And you look at you look at WebMD again. I thought WebMD. I've, I've seen a, a few sites, and, and the general thinking is there are both nature and nurture elements to phobias, right? Okay. So the how would there be any nature? Well, so this is my thinking as well. Yeah. Apparently, they believe there to be genetic components to phobias. No, I'm not buying that. And you know why they think that though? The only thing I can, the only actual text justification I could find for yeah. that assertion was that. Phobias tend to run in families. Yeah, they run in families because you're looking at the person who's your caregiver being scared of a thing. You're like, oh, I'll be scared of that thing as well because it's obviously something scary. Exactly. As soon as, like, my mum displays a fear of spiders, there's two good reasons why I'm now afraid of spiders. Firstly, I'm learning everything from mum. and yep. She's displayed that they are scary things. We yep. need to be afraid of them. And second thing, that's my protector. Mm. If my protector's scared of that thing, wow, I need to be scared of it. Because it must be scary. Yeah, it must be hella uh, scary. Comparatively, I'm, I'm scared of all sudden noises and, and most things that jump out. Whereas my mum and my nan were the two people, I think, only in the world ever that didn't have a single bloody fear between them. <laughs> <laughs> they, those two women, Christ, there was nothing they were scared of. Nothing. Really? Oh, God, yeah. Especially my nan. My nan was like, Made of steel, made of Italian steel. Italians or pasta. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think this is this is the thing as well that we, I, I do get this thing, parents coming to see me who are fiercely not displaying any fear of anything to their children because they don't want their children to pick up on their fears. Yeah. Do you think they did that at, or, at all? No, no, no. My no. nan was just my nan had seen a lot. She travelled the world. She'd gone to different countries. She's yeah. She was fierce. No, no. And I think my mum was just too busy to be scared of anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think what, if my parents were, were afraid of anything. I don't think I remember my parents displaying any fears. No. Apparently my dad isn't great with spiders. Apparently mum yeah. would have to get rid of the spiders. Yeah. Yeah. I can believe that. But I've noticed as well that my mum is <coughs> slightly more cautious around spiders uh, in recent years because when we were uh, moving into here, the place we live now, she picked up a spider to take it outside. Yeah. And it bit her. And it was the first time a spider had actually bitten her. Because I remember her, like, going, ow, and, you know, dropping it. Yeah. And I think ever since then, she's been just a little bit, um, you know, wary yeah. of spiders. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, I can believe and that. And again, I think it's that natural thing of where do we pick up these fears from. Yeah. You know? Well, we asked people what their fears were and, uh, you know, the sort of thing that, that they're scared of now and where they think it came from. And I will tell you this now, I got some good ones. <laughs> Did you now? <laughs> yes. I'll bet. So I'm leaving these anonymous um, just because I think that's probably probably the, for the best. Um, <laughs> but I'm leaving these anonymous. So one of them we got, okay, and this person has also sent me the name of the fear. Um, I cannot say it. I cannot say it even more because I have braces on. Um, <laughs> but I'll give it a go. Okay, go on then. So... 
my crazy phobia of stickers is stickers. called stickers oh. is called <gasps> pitakaniophobia. Uh, <laughs> Pitta kionophobia. That sounded a better pronunciation. Which sounds like a phobia of pitta bread. And it does, if, doesn't if it? You were yeah. to ask me. Um, it seems to have stemmed from when my mum bought shampoo from the chemist and they had paper sticker price tags, you know, like the paper mm. price gun. Uh, she never removed them, and when they got wet, they got slimy. One time, uh, I picked oh. up the bottle, it came off in my hand, and the sensation texture was so gross, and ever since then, stickers often make me heave. Wow. That really <clears throat> reminds me of a, a girl I used to go out with in my very younger days, and she had a fear of buttons. Buttons! And she knew where that came from as well. It was because when she was younger... Her nan used to give her a jar of buttons to play with, and just sort of, you know, she would she would arrange them, and you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and then one day she decided to tip them all out and get to the bottom of them, yeah. And it was all sort of dust and lint and oh. dirt in them, and it she it freaked her out because it felt weird. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, or it yeah. just startled her in a way that imprinted on her. Yeah, you know what I mean. So a lot of these things as well. What I've noticed is it's not so much I'm scared of the thing, as in like. A cower in a corner, I'm scared of it. Mm. But it's, this happened, I didn't like how it made me feel, and now I stay away from it. That's a really good distinction, actually. You know? Yeah. So, like this one, for example, small enclosed spaces. When I was younger, I had an MRI and was left in the machine alone. Oh. Um, yeah. I So, I had to have an MRI fairly recently. When was it? December? Yeah, it was December. Uh, I had to have an MRI on my back. And, um, you yeah, do you know, I get this one. So I wouldn't say I was, <laughs> I'm not claustrophobic, Darren. You know, I'm not, uh, I've wanted to do that the whole time. We said we were talking about fears and phobias. Um, I'm not saying I'm specifically claustrophobic, but I don't like getting in tubes. And, yeah. uh, and I think, you know, I liken that to, you know, like, uh, in swimming pools, you know, yes. the, the flumes. Yeah. So, I didn't like it as a kid, and I and I know exactly where this stems from. And nothing has ever happened to me mm. um, to make me think this is going to happen. But I'm scared I'm going to get stuck. Okay, that's all it is. Even though I know, I know I'm not going to get stuck. Yeah, I'm like I'm not going in that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get stuck. So an MRI, I understand uh, mm. to the point where when I have my MRI, I close my eyes for the entire time. Mm. And then when I was being wheeled out of it, I was like, oh, I think I'm definitely past the point now. I think my head's out of this machine. Yeah. And I briefly opened my eyes and it was like right in front of my face. And yeah. I was like, no, no, close your eyes again, close your eyes again. So if I close my eyes, like I'm okay. Yeah. I can just pretend the, it's not there. I, I think MRI is a really common one as well. They're loud as well. That's the thing. Sudden it, noises. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is. That's, I mean, I'm not trying to freak people out here. I have, I have imminent MRIs coming up. But... <laughs> There is, it is a small tube, you, mm. and you're right. You do actually, if you open your eyes, you're looking like directly yeah, into yeah. It, at, at the wall that you're surrounded by, if you yeah. like. And it does make a, a, a heller of a kachunking sound, <laughs> doesn't it, if I can put it that way? You yeah, know? that's actually the, the sound. Yeah, kachunk, 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 kachunk. 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 Yeah, it's a very... <laughs> and you do, uh, even, even I, you know, who I understand how to, you know, work with my emotions, I'm a bit like... Yeah, just chill out, you know. Yeah, you you yeah. almost consciously <laughs> remind yourself that this is the place you need to be right now. Yes. And it's safe and that sort of thing. Right. Know? This next one. The person didn't put where they think it came from, mm. but I'm going to read it word for word verbatim and you can do the working out yourself. Okay. Moths. Menacingly flying at night, wings humming, ready to fly in your mouth and choke you. <laughs> wow. That now, is, um... we'd like to say we are not laughing at the fear. No. But I'm definitely laughing at the the way you've worded that is amazing. Yeah, that's very it's very poetic. It's very it is. Sort of, yeah, it's or um, moths or night butterflies. That's true. As, yeah, uh, as we call them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's obviously that's something that's either happened, you know, that they think is going to happen to the point where mm. you know you've maybe talked yourself into it. And... So so here's the thing for me. I'm thinking, okay, so did did that did a, a moth fly in your mouth yeah. once when you were younger, or did you just? conceptualize that at some point the idea that if yes. something you know what i mean yeah 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 like you've imagined it so much that it's become yeah. almost real yeah and there's so many places we can pick up uh, fears and phobias and it, you know it can be an experience that was really unpleasant yeah. it could be somebody whose opinion we trust or who we look up to or whose whose influence we value um suggesting this thing is scary and they're yes. scared of it yeah. or it could just be that we conceptualize something in such a way mm. that a bit of a said well stay away from that yes so um actually when i think about uh fears when i was younger 
I used to be scared of uh, thunder and lightning storms. Yeah. Um, and I remember because my nan, now here's the thing, my nan wasn't scared. Like I said, she wasn't scared of anything. Mm. But she had this weird thing of when we had light, specifically lightning storms, mm. she would turn all of the switches off, oh. all the electricity switches. Yeah. Because she was worried that, you know, the house might be electrocuted and catch on fire. I don't oh, know. Yeah. But so she, because I saw her turn off the switches, my brain went, oh, this is something scary. Even though she, yeah. she wasn't scared, she didn't say she was scared, she was doing it for a very... Yeah. practical reason yes. or that she thought it was obviously a practical reason i don't know what happened in early century um <laughs> italy i'm not sure how it worked but um but she would turn all the switches off so as a result i remember growing up and up until probably my early 20s mm. if we ever had thunder and lightning i would still do it oh i don't do it anymore because i'm like oh it doesn't really happen but um <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, electricity also, in, in early Italy was probably not so good. Probably. Also, the house that I grew up in, we had metal uh, windows and door frames. Oh. So it was more, I don't know, in my head I was like, oh, what if I'm holding the door handle at the same time that lightning hits the door? Then, you know, it was that kind of thing. So that's the sort of thing I mean where my nan didn't express a fear. Yeah. But it was still something that I then became wary of. I get you. Yeah, yeah. You know, that reminds me of the time my sister had a handful of stuff and and went to turn the light on with her tongue. I remember my parents freaked out a little bit about that. (laughs) Not to be advised. No, don't don't lick electrics. (laughs) Um, Any others then? This one, uh, which again, please, please don't think I'm laughing at your fears. I'm absolutely not. But the way you've worded some of these (laughs) is amazing. Bunches of bananas. Single bananas are fine. But bunches are weird and freak me out. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's bananas hanging around in gangs, isn't it, really? Let's face it. So, yeah, bunches of bananas. Well, I've actually, I don't think I've heard of that one. But what I, had, I had more then? than one person say bananas. Really? I had more than one, yeah. I had three, I think. Wow, I wish I'd looked up the actual name for banana folk. Three, people, three people didn't like bananas. Um, this next one, though, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about as well. Dead birds yeah. from treading on one barefoot as a child. Uh, Exactly, a prime example mm-hmm. of getting a fear of something from a, for an individual experience. Yeah? Yes, uh, and again, we would we would call it a phobia because it's one of those those fears that doesn't seem appropriate for the situation. If you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. And here's the thing, though: people talk about rational or irrational fears. Yeah. Mm. And as you know very well, I don't really accept the term irrational fear. No. Because irrational, by definition, means without reason. Mm. And Every, everything your mind does yes. has a reason. Yeah. yeah. It's trying to keep you safe. Exactly. And, and it's trying to, in some way, steer you towards some form of happiness. If mm. you've got an unpleasant experience awaiting you in, associated with a certain item or a certain situation, yep. then that is the reason why your mind is trying to avert you from it. Yeah, no. So there's always a reason, you know. Well, do you know what? Similar to, so this next one I've got, this isn't even something that happened to this person regarding the thing. Mm. You'll see what I mean. Rats. You know, a lot of people are scared of rats. You know, yeah. that's that's quite common. But rats, we had them in our previous home and it coincided with a period of mental ill health. Oh, wow. So that's a, like a fear by association. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all, yeah, wow, that's that's a really interesting one, actually. Because mm, yeah. your brain sort of, you know, puts the two and two together and gets six. And this is a classic example of how we've got to listen to the individual, listen to why we're afraid of something rather than why we assume we might be afraid of something. Yes. Because I know a lot of people don't like mice and rats because they move fast. And it's like you were saying, the thing yes, running the thing, at you. the thing. So, yeah. like, you know, we, do you remember, we had mice. Yeah. Um, we, you were living in an old, old building and we had, we had mice. And I was upstairs and I was by myself and I just saw this scuttling uh, mm. along the skirting board. Yeah. And it made me jump. Yeah. Not because I think this tiny mouse is going to do anything to hurt me, but I was like, mm. ah, what's that? Yeah. You know, like it was that sort of, yeah. Samantha, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, that, it is, it, yeah it's, it's a startle sudden. response, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. I Something... don't deal well with being startled. Like, so our it's friend really Loz, so we had a Halloween party and um, we're those people and we hired scare actors for our Halloween <laughs> party. We're, I know we're bad yeah, people. We <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it, but we did it to freak out our friends. Anyway, a lot of our friends, Hi, JD. Um, <laughs> jumped uh, three feet in the air when yeah. they got spooked. Like, absolutely, I would too. I would scream. I'd probably cry. If yeah. something jumped out at me in like that way, I'd probably cry. Yeah. Our friend Loz, who used to be in the police, yeah. uh, just as someone tried to spook her, she held out her arm and went, no! <laughs> and went into full, and went full riot control. Mode. Exactly. Yeah. So you can't spook her. She's unspookable. <laughs> you know? So whereas, you know, so for example, there, there are some people that can be spooked and can't be spooked. And, well, and, here's a question and then. Do you be... think she was naturally unspookable? Or do you think when she was in the police, her training 
enabled her to subconsciously be less vulnerable to being spooked? That's a really good question. I don't know. I'm going to ask her. Yeah, I, I think as well. I'd like to know, does she feel that her police training equips her? Because it wasn't like a thought through response. It no, wasn't it was like, automatic. Oh, here comes somebody, yeah, yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me kick into self-defence mode. Yeah. Literally, when something startled her, she went into right no. police mode yeah, or my yeah. training. And I, I feel like there's something about when we get trained in those disciplines, and the army as well are like this, aren't they? Yes. They're, they're training you in such an emotive way. And, and such a, a kind of, it's drilled into you. Mm. The, the aim isn't so that when you think about it, you know what to do in those circumstances. It's like, no, you automatically, your training kicks in, goes your mind just it. goes there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's what it is really. The fight or flight is our subconscious response. Yeah, in the same way that actually me being easily spooked mm. helps me in circumstances because it means things don't fall on my head. It means things don't, that's true. Things don't, because I, I back out the way. Yeah. You know, but I find when it's objects, so you say fight or flight, I find when it's objects yeah. or like animals or something, I am flight. Yeah. But if people spook me, I mm. punch them. <laughs> it's, it's, there's, it's a very different, it's like yes. flight with objects, fight with, <laughs> with Which, people. You could argue is appropriate, I suppose. <laughs> um, so talk, we were talking to mice though, because it just reminded me the other day when we, we were driving home in the mm. dark. And the headlights caught a mouse because we, we go yes. through country lanes and it darted across the road yes. really quickly. And I've got quite good at not swerving when animals run out and kind of just ma yeah, maintaining yeah, control. Because yeah. there's a bit of me that wants to go, oh, what's that? But then you've got to make sure you don't swerve off the road because yes. a mouse has run out in front of you. But I remember, so you, I said, cool, aren't mice quick though? Because I wouldn't have thought <laughs> it could have got across the road in the time it took the car to get to yeah, it. Yeah. And you Googled it and, and mice run at eight miles an hour. Which, and in the article it said, which might not sound like much, but if the mice was the size of a man, that would mean it would be running at 160 <laughs> miles an hour. No, can you imagine that? I know. I think I've developed a fear of man-sized mice running at 160, 160 miles an hour. hour. That is terrifying. <laughs> oh, my God. Also, the only thing that, um, thing that makes you jump when we're in the car is if I see a bat. That's true. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, the own... Oh, I, I love I can't... bats. I just want to point this out. I love bats. Um, and I think, you know, because of fairly recent events in 2020, 2021, bats have been given a bad rap. It was not the bat's fault. The bat did not ask to be eaten. Thank you. Um, so do not do not blame bats for, for any of this nonsense. We were, we were just pulling out of a junction. <laughs> Literally, I was. we stopped at the junction. I looked left. I looked right. Okay, I can now merge into the... And as I pulled away, Rick went... <laughs> Like that. And it sounded so much... Because also, if a car had suddenly sprung out of the darkness, she probably would have gone, Bay! Or something like that. So I just thought, honestly, I slammed the brakes on and I looked around at you and you were looking at me like a six-year-old that had just accidentally broken something of mum's. Unbelievable. I'm so... Oh. That was that was my start response there. When I went, I went for a walk with my friend Kira uh, one evening, and I saw a bat, and I shouted "bat," and she she said in her what I claim, claim to be a very uh, heavier Irish accent than she actually has. Yeah, and she was like Jesus because <laughs> <laughs> I made her jump, but I didn't mean to. I just I saw the bat, and I yeah. wanted to tell everybody that there was a bat in the vicinity. Yes, it's not that you're scared of it either, is it? Oh, just, I love bats. You love bats. Yeah, yeah. You're declaring. I've <laughs> There's seen a bat. bat. Yes, and I've seen the bat, so I think you should all see the bat. Anyway, um, anyway. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so one of these other ones that we had again, this seems very much a, oh yes, that's where that's come from. Lifts. When I was ten, I got trapped in one on a ferry during a Force Eight gale. Oh wow, yeah, that'll do it. That's going to do it. That would do it. Lifts is a very common one. Actually. Yeah. So I actually got stuck in a lift when I was a kid. Um, and I'm not, I'm not scared of lifts, but I absolutely won't go in little lifts at, in, you know, like little janky B&Bs and stuff like that. Like, you yeah, know, when they have a yeah. lift that just fits you and one suitcase. Uh, yes. I ain't getting in them, but that's the same reason why I'm not getting on like carnival rides that have just pitched up two hours before. I don't trust that safety. That's true. You won't get on no. any temporarily installed <laughs> carnival ride. You're not getting on that absolutely one. Absolutely not. No, but you'll get on Tower of Terror, which yes. is like a lift that but drops. It's, but it's permanently installed. I suppose, I suppose. I, I trust, I trust the mouse. You know, I don't trust. Yeah, I, I don't trust the fact that the, the seat belts are just not adequate. Oh, really, really. uh, yeah. Also, the last one I've got. Um, people in costume from when my older brothers jumped out at me in Halloween attire aged five. Okay, so you can completely relate to this, can't you? Can I? Yeah, because what's your actual fear? 
Oh, oh. yes. So I forget about this because it's not something that I actually encounter day to day. No, it's not. No. It's not. But I'm, you know, I'm not fond of empty suits of armour. <laughs> Don't laugh. I'm not fond of them. Um, I just never have. And I think if you've seen the film Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, <laughs> that's absolutely where it came from. The fact that that's they were its just... origins, is it? The absolutely, Disney film. Absolutely. Where they were just wandering around by themselves, like yeah. not happy with it, don't like it, freaks me out. Um, no. Anyway. Mm. And then when I was younger, we went to, it was on like a school exchange trip and we were in Germany. Mm. And we went to this little theme park that was medieval themed. Yeah. I was like, this is fine. Um, and then uh, I walked into, uh, it was like this fake castle thing that was made in paper mache, I don't know. But uh, at the side of me, there was a suit of armour. Yeah. And I had my eyes on it because I'm like, I don't like it. I'm going to keep my eye on it, obviously. Mm. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, um, <laughs> I felt a hand on my shoulder. Uh, <laughs> and that made me, as we know, I don't like being spooked. Yeah. Hand on my shoulder. I've turned around. It's suit of armour. Uh, and I've passed out. You've passed out. You've literally lost fallen consciousness. Fallen on the floor. Brilliant. I'm done. End of scene. Done. <laughs> Brit is over. Thank you. Thanks for playing. And what it turned out is obviously there were people in those suits of armour and it was there. They were spooking people. Fine. But what happened was if the guy, if I'd have just come to mm. and the guy had like taken his helmet off and gone, I'm here, you know, yes. I feed his end. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> you know, it would have been okay. But I woke up and he'd gone. He'd gone. He had gone. Uh, so and people it, were like, what suit of armour? Oh, time. People were like, you're right. And I'm like, I'm fine. So I'm not keen on them and I will give them a wide berth. But again, is it something that affects my day-to-day -day life? Absolutely not. It's not going to restrict your movements, is it? No, only when I'm at a castle. That's true, yeah. You don't you do you're a bit wary of them as we go past them, I've noticed that. Yes. Leeds Castle, the, the suits of armour there, you're a bit like I don't like it. I know where they are you and I'll stay there, away my friend. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. then the others I just had without any reasoning that people just gave, so I thought these yeah. were interesting. These were the most common ones as yes. well. Death, thunderstorms, spiders, needles, birds, vomiting, belly buttons. Belly buttons more common than you might think. Butterflies, heights and failure. Failure, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a very commonly cited one that I, I experience with yeah. clients as well. Um, yeah, a, a full range then, a full mm. range. The one that I had come up um, that I thought was interesting that we've spoken about before, trypophobia. Oh, holes. Holes, yeah, closely mm. packed holes. Mm. That I make did, me itch. Well, I did a bit of research on this as well because this is one, if you look it up, this, it's actually uh, experts are divided as to whether it's a real phobia. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so some people are saying that it's it taps into some primal fear of predators. So the, the example given, I have to actually check this to make sure I'm saying this right. Yeah, um, fear of animals that are predators, like the blue-ringed octopus. Right. The, this research suggests it was more centred around highly contrasted colours. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I've got no idea. I, I don't fully understand. I mean, it sounds a bit like someone has done too much research. It there. does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. They've looked for patterns where there are none. Yes. You know? um, but, you know, there, there is definitely something about what's in the holes, I think, for you, isn't there? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So, I posted a picture of my breakfast, which happened to be some crumpets, yeah, and yeah. someone messaged me saying that I should have put a, I should have put a warning for for trypophobia. And then I had yeah. someone else message me saying that their son loves crumpets or something, but can only have them at, at their dad's because they mm. don't want crumpets in the house. And I'm like, I don't like holes, as in if I see. Okay, for me, it's the the what's it what's it called? Oh, the flower that we sometimes have in our Christmas oh, the wreath. Oh, lotus. You like know. a lotus? Yeah, a lotus it's flower. Like a, yeah. They make me itch. I yes. don't like them because my brain tells me that the bugs are going to come out of it and I don't like okay, it. Okay, so that's where your mind's going. That's where my mind yeah, But yeah. holes in a crumpet, oh, fill it with butter. <laughs> 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 if it's anything to do with food, I'm fine. It's all context, yeah. isn't it? Really? <laughs> you, you'll fight through any fear to get to the To food. get the food, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, but that's an interesting one, I, and again, I think there's a lot of talk on the internet about that because yes. it was, I remember there was a, there was a time when it was sort of like a viral thing to to put pictures of yeah, yeah. potentially triggering trypophobic images. Yeah. Um, the, the one that I experienced, my friend Liam, um, I haven't seen him for ages, but I, this was the one that I always remember he had tomato ketchup. I mean. So when he got together with Gemma, his now wife, they've got two lovely kids. Um, he said to her when they first had fish and chips, he's like, I will not touch the tomato ketchup, <laughs> by the way. And he said, I need to tell you now, if you like do a joke of, oh, I'll pretend to throw tomato ketchup at you or I'll go Whoa, with the tomato ketchup. He said, I will end our relationship. <laughs> 
and, and I know Liam. He was deadly serious. You know, this is not a joke now. Wow. Yeah, it was. It, and, and to be fair, I found out later it didn't. It wasn't just smart ketchup. It extended to all vinegar-based condiments. What, so like pickled onions and stuff? Well, I, I, this is it. I didn't. I didn't push it too far. You know, because you don't want to talk too much about it That's when somebody's afraid of it. That's but, interesting. Yeah, yeah. But um, I eat so much ketchup. Yeah. Well, this is it. I can't, I can't imagine life without ketchup. It's like one of those <laughs> essentials. But thanks so much, everyone, for sending those in. Yes, because thank you. It's, it's really interesting to see, I don't know, just, just the way different people experience different things. I think, yeah. I think it's always fascinating, really. Um, and it was a great response from everyone, wasn't it? Mm, we got really good, really we, good. We can't possibly mention all of them because there were no. just too many that we got. Um, right, what I wanted to do now, he said moving on to the next item on his agenda, um, the top ten... Fears and phobias in the UK because we've talked about some common ones, right? We're gonna do a but, few of them, aren't we? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a highlights bit here. Um, there, there's a lot of them are what you might think. Huh? Do you think you can? Um, can you guess the top three? Because okay. we've, we've referenced two. Well, we've definitely referenced one of them. Okay. We've semi referenced the other another one, and we've, there's one we haven't even mentioned yet. Okay, spiders. No, spiders is number five oh, on snakes. the head parade. Snakes number three. There you go. Boom. It's um, orphidophobia. Nice. Heights. Heights is number one. <gasps> is it? Acrophobia. And what's really funny is I'm I'm not scared of heights at all. No. And I kind of think if it was something that was number one fear, like I would be scared of it. But, yeah. but no, no. Um, so it's the classic thing that you do, that if you experience it, it's completely understandable. <laughs> if you don't, I don't understand. I don't understand it, yeah. yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Just get over it. Um, fear of, I'm going to say failure because we spoke about it. It's actually not on the top 10 list, oh, but I feel like maybe a more up-to-date or maybe mm. a more comprehensive list might include that because I think it is something that people don't necessarily mention as a fear, but a, a fear that we all have. You Needles. Know? Needles. Injections, that kind of thing. No, it's not on the top 10, huh. which is surprising to me as well, because fear of needles is one of the things I see most in terms of the phobias that I deal with. And I think that's because it's the one thing, you know, you can get away with not being near a snake if you don't want to be near a snake. Yeah. But if you need medical injections or your vaccine, don't get vaccinated, people. Exactly. Um, if you need that, then, you know, you're going to have to confront it. It's that classic thing where the only time we do go and get something done about our phobias is when we can no longer avoid them. Yes. Yeah, when the tube map doesn't show us an alternative <laughs> route anymore. Um, yeah. Oh, God, I don't know. Everything. I'm looking at my little list here. Well, okay, I'm going to prompt you here. Go I'm going to prompt you here because it's something that at one point um, it made the headlines because on a certain poll it was a fear that people regard as a scarier than death. Um, claustrophobia? No, no, it's cl oh. close because it is, uh, claustrophobia is on here somewhere. I can't what is find that? It. Um, it is actually a fear of public speaking. Wow. Number two. On the really? List. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, 20% yeah. of the populace in the UK, this is, yeah. are so afraid of public speaking, they can't even bear to think about the prospect of doing it. Wow. Yeah. yeah we If I'm honest, that is probably the number one fear, yeah. as in pure fear of phobia, that I deal with with people. It's called glossophobia. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really interesting. No, yeah. yeah and here's another interesting fact. Women are twice as likely to suffer that than men. I can give you a thousand and one feminist reasons <laughs> why I think that is, but today's not the day. Yeah, I feel we've just triggered your feminist gene mm -hmm. there. That is, but, um, and a couple of other interests. Uh, fear of flying is number four. Right. Um, and I know my good friend Howard Cooper uh, for a long time has specialised in fear of flying. Uh, aerophobia. And yeah, it has gone up since 9-11. Well, that makes sense. It does make sense, really, doesn't That's it? That makes sense. But yeah. is that a fear of flying or is that just a fear of, of things disrupting your flight? Well, I think it classified with fear of flying a fear of things like terrorism mm. as well, you know, and, and I think mm. a lot of people's fears aren't just, it, it's the not being in control. Yes, with absolutely. Fear of flying, yeah. I agree. Which you could argue is a lot of things with with phobias yeah. and not having control of the situation is a thing we don't really like. Yes. You know? um, and one that I'm sure most can relate to, um, I can't pronounce this. Coolrophobia, cowlrophobia, C O U L anyway, rophobia. Uh, fear of clowns. Clowns. Oh, clowns. one. someone did say clowns. I didn't write it down, but there was, yeah. and someone said they thought it was from watching uh, It as well, a child. I, I wondered if clowns is something that, you know, if we'd have gone back like 50 years, yeah. if that was a thing, because I only really remember clowns being regarded as scary when Stephen King wrote It. I wonder if Stephen King knows how many people on the earth i mean he wouldn't know but i wonder if he well, how he would feel knowing how many people on the earth have a clown phobia because of him and i don't know the man personally but i think he'd be delighted uh, yeah i feel like he, <laughs> he has a certain smug grin about that I feel, yeah. and also i feel like stephen king's well versed on the stats he knows what we're afraid of <laughs> that's what he taps into um but remember in 2016 oh, when there oh, was the a clown trend attack. 
clown attacks. Yeah. I remember at the time doing, it was an Instagram story because I don't think that was around at the time, but yeah. I think I did a Facebook status. I was like, if anyone drops out on me, <laughs> I will not be held responsible for my actions. I mean, we'd have had some dead clowns. Absolutely. That's, that's the thing there, yeah. You'd have stolen their baseball bat or their, or their squeaky hammer. I don't know, you want to play? Let's play, let's go, let's go. You and me. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Right, okay. So what I've got, um, but that's the, that's the top ones. I mean, probably yes. there's ones that we recognise there. Yeah. Um, but I've got some slightly more obscure. I ones wonder why you're you. now shielding. Yeah, the I've, paper got, I've from just those. listen. I've just picked up a bit of paper, which I do not want Brit to see the answers of. I I just grabbed. Uh, I found a list of quite not necessarily rare, but the, the less common phobias. Right. Um, I'm going to give you the name of the phobia. Okay. I want you to guess what it's actually a. Theory. You're going to give me its Latin name. <laughs> is that what it is? A Latin. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. First one. Yeah. So clues in the name. Clues in the name. Okay. 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 Um, Ophthalmophobia. Oh, fear of opticians or glasses or something. It's something to do with, with your eyes. sight. Sight. Yeah. Fear of losing your sight. No, you're close. Fear of not seeing things. You're not going to get it. No. You were close. It's a fear of being stared at. <laughs> which, which I, I was... think I have that. <laughs> yeah. well, I think, when you think about it, you know when you can feel when someone's looking at you? Mm. You know, when you're reading your book or you're in a coffee shop and you just suddenly realise, yeah, 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 you yeah. feel it. I wonder yeah. what that is. Mm. Oh, Psychic abilities. Psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what it is, I'm sure. Um, you'll like this next one. Go on. Cosmicophobia. Fear of space. Fear of planets. Fear oh, you're of, really close. The darkness of space. The emptiness of space. <laughs> the coldness of space. Space smells like steak. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fear of cosmic phenomena. Like space, like space. Yeah. So I got it right. Then. Well, I don't, I, it might be. See, I didn't. I didn't do a deeper dive into this. Fear of just, planets. Yeah, fear, maybe fear of asteroids or something. It could be a fear of something hitting the Earth or something. Like, I don't know. Huh. Cosmic phenomena. Space. In space. Yeah. yeah. Space. Um, apologies if you suffer this next one. Xanthophobia. Xanth. Yeah. Xanth. X. Z oh. X a n t h o phobia. Fear of Xanax. That is a terrible guess. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Uh, this one, actually, I don't know if the clue is in the name, so I don't know Latin well enough. It's the fear of the colour or the word yellow. Huh. Mm. Hmm. So anyone that's suffering that phobia has just literally yeah. had to turn the podcast off now. Wow. Perhaps we should have done a trigger warning for that. So like anything, what, like the sun? Well, this is, I don't, I don't quite understand it. Because I, I think it's a fairly, well, a less than common one. Yeah. But you know what, I'd love, I say I'd love it, it'd be great to hear somebody who deals with that, yeah, explain yeah, yeah. what the... What it is. Yeah, and how trigger. it impacts on a, on a daily basis, uh, maybe. Because I imagine it would. Yellow's a fairly... Well, I'll just say it again. Oops. The, it's a fairly common... <laughs> I'm looking around the room looking for Your Space colour. Invaders sign and your Asteroids sign are both you, yellow. You're giving away too much about me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one, you can work this out if you think about it. Panophobia. Pan. Yeah. And it's not saucepans. Oh. Or fear of being hit by a saucepan. <laughs> Uh, fear of uh, pansexuals. Okay, so the pan in pansexuals is because you're attracted to... Everything. Everything. So yes. panophobia is a fear of... Everything. Everything. No! Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's what a, a lie. A fear of... <laughs> that's that's <laughs> not is. true. No, it is panophobia. Fear of everything. A fear of, a, a fear of everything. You're, you're scared of everything. Well, I, I think earlier on, at the start of the podcast, you kind of declared yourself <laughs> to have that position, didn't you? Pansexual, panophobia. I, I deal with all the pans. You're all about the pans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. And finally... Um, Phobophobia. Oh no, a fear of being scared. It is a fear of fear. Yeah. <laughs> Look at your exasperation. I really saw them. But having, I, I keep thinking about My this. My favourite one, I thought one of the ones I thought you were going to say, and I can't remember what the name is, but it's a fear that, <laughs> it's a fear that at some point, somewhere, a duck is looking at you. <laughs> is that actually a thing though, or was that just a fear? Well, a fear of culture? yellow. Yeah, well, I mean, there are lots of, yeah. People are scared strangers. of everything. Yeah. But fear of fear, by the way, yeah. is incredibly common. Because when you think about it... It's like being anxious about anxiety. Exactly. It's, the, it's what we call secondary fear. Mm. It's the fear of our fear response kicking in, yeah. which, is, which is actually probably more common than, than we might think. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, you know what? I think we've done quite a, a deep dive into, into yes. stuff there. The one last Sorry thing I want to say... Sorry if this podcast has been slightly triggering for you, if you deal with any of the things that we talk about. Probably should have said that before <laughs> we started. I mean, we've called it fears and phobias, you know. That's true. We, yeah, the, the, name, the clue is in the name. Um, <laughs> The, the thing I want to say, there are many ways of treating fears or phobias so that you no longer have that fear or phobia. Yeah. The, most, the most common way is exposure therapy, uh, where you... you it's oh, like I'm a not keen on that. It's a systematic desensitisation. If you bring a suit of armour into this house... 
I, I mean, will leave. You'll, you'll either get over it or <laughs> that'll be the end of it. Yeah, but, um, no, but uh, to be fair, the way they go about it, I believe, is they, they just systematically introduce it. And, and then when you get too uncomfortable, you're removed from it. Although well, if you go cognitive behavioural therapy route. CBT. Yep. I believe the way they, they do this kind of therapy is that they will have us kind of working with our feelings as we're going about that. Right. Yeah, so it's almost okay, like yeah. there's a bit more cognitive investigation of how we feel. There's a bit more logical, conscious stuff going on. I'm with, with that, you. Yeah. Um, or, you know, slightly biased perhaps, but I could advocate the hypnotherapy route or the remedial hypnotism route. Oh, hang because, on. Plug. Yeah, plug. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, we do get great results changing yeah. things. The no, you do. We, I've seen, I've seen, you do amazing work with people. Yeah, the, the way we think about it is there's a part of your mind creating a fear response for what it perceives to be a good reason. Yes. If we can examine that reason, invalidate that reason in a way that empowers that part to do something different, yeah. then we can get a shift in that almost instantaneously you know it's 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 amazing how quickly we can overcome these fears mm. when we apply ourselves and i think as we normally do we want to leave a positive message at the end of this podcast yes and i don't know if you started listening to this podcast thinking phobias and fears were just these things that some people had and some people didn't but it's learnt mm. yeah at some point we've been through something and we've developed this response the i mean these answers is, surely tell us that well exactly we we see this all the time it's funny how often I meet people and talk to them about this stuff and they recognise, yeah, it was because I went through this or I experienced this. The, the idea that we can pass down our fears to our children is mm. very much accepted in the general populace, but we don't so readily accept the idea that we can relearn and we can change stuff. Yeah, That's the message here, is that I deal every day with people changing the way they feel and the way they respond to things. Yeah. So don't think like any fear or phobia is something you're stuck with forever. It's just about finding the right way of getting this changed for you. Oh, the power's in your hands, guys. It absolutely is. As always, we're in charge of our own change and we're in control of our own destiny. Oh, that's nice. That was a bit poetic right at the end, wasn't I it? I liked that, yeah. yeah it's good. It makes a change from our usual content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we try and leave people in some way the way we found them yeah. rather than completely uh, messed up. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. We've really, really appreciated all of your input for this, uh, I was about to say this lesson, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone all Sesame Street on it. Yeah. Um, thank you for your input for this episode. If you'd like to get involved uh, with podcasts in the future, please do check our social medias because we are always doing uh, call outs and advice and just your general thoughts on the podcast. Yeah. So you can come find us on Instagram. You can find me at Brit Marie Box and you can find Tim at Tim Box Mind Coach. So come give us a follow, come say hello. And until we speak to you next time, keep thinking outside the box. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.